Zombie Apocalypse Chapter 9, Dream Sequence 2 Delta at Bunker Charlie, Episode 2, 25 May 2021. Dada to re-up our supply of medical equipment. Everyone agreed. We pulled back by squad and returned to our vehicles. We were back at the hastily set up command post for the wipe and clean task force about one mile south of the airport. All four squads were resting. No one was anxious to go back. The entire airport was infested with those afflicted things. Some mad North Korean scientists had managed to turn the entire airport into a biohazardous human zombie experiment that had led to the next level, zombie apocalypse. Whatever they had done to the test subjects had turned them into zombies, starved for warm flesh and blood. But whoever they were and whatever they had done create those afflicted things, we all realized that it would be harder than we thought to ensure the survival of humankind. Several days later, we and the same three squads went back to pick up where we had left off. The first squad was one trooper short. But we had to clear out the afflicted things at all costs. The first squad moved into the entrance after tossing in several flash bangs. The troopers were wearing visors that enabled them to see through the thick smoke. All three squads disappeared in the chaos. HK guy led us with his shotgun at the ready. The six medics followed, and I covered the rear. HK guy continued on course, which meant that all three squads had moved farther into the hallway. It was noiseless for the first 15 minutes, then a barrage of gunshots erupted, along with yelling and shouting. A trooper screamed, steady and fire. A few seconds later, another trooper yelled, suppress fire and pull back by squad. A female soldier yelled, medics. The leader of the third squad yelled, we need medics. The lead medic replied, on our way. HK guy led, followed by the six medics with me bringing up the rear. We arrived at the scene less than a minute later to find that there were a number of afflicted things stacked up to ceiling with parts of their bodies ripped off. The three squads had annihilated these afflicted things, but now the supply of ammunition for their main weapons had dried up. They were using their sidearms. Sidearm had the capacity for 27 rounds tops, and the troopers were using up that ammunition fast. Other soldiers were dragging their injured comrades over to us. All six medics went to work with HK guys oversight. The vast majority of the wounds were burns from the AC blood. If there were no bite marks, then it was possible to treat the wounded. All three leaders agreed to pull back to regroup and resupply the squads with ammo. Some of the troopers were limping, and others with more severe injuries were being carried by their comrade. Once the last injured trooper had been loaded into the medic's hummer, once the troopers were in their hummers, we all roared out, arriving at the makeshift compound in less than five minutes. A few hours later, HK Guy Andy were at the screened-off area in the medic tent. The lead medic and other medics were busy treating the wounded troopers. Almost all the injuries were burns from the afflicted thing's acid blood. The soldiers' clothes had been burned through. Many of them severe burns on their skin. The afflicted thing's acid blood had also burned some of the soldiers' weapons, the blood being able to burn or liquefy anything. Several days went by, and the task force Bigwig Shadent released as are the three other combat squads to return to the task off clearing the hospital of afflicted things. Thus far, we hadn't made anywhere close to the atrium. We were still on the entrance hallway, the actual atrium being 500 meters away. None of the four leaders minded. They kept quiet in the hopes that the bigwigs would forget all about their squads. New weapons were issued, ammo was replenished. New troopers replaced the severely injured ones so that each squad now had 12 members. All four squads were issued standby orders. At coffee break one morning, I ran into the leader of the first squad, a special ops infantryman from Manila. His specialty was jungle warfare. We spoke briefly, he thought that I was a medic. I corrected him, saying, I am a guard for the medic squad. He asked, you know medicine. I don't know medicine from a hole in the wall, I told him. Then I asked, what didn't we see at the airport? He gulped down a mouthful, then said, we're in trouble. 
Those afflicted things see as humans a source of food. And they are starving. There are a great many of them in there. I requested shoulder-mounted missile launchers, but my request was denied. We were issued several extra hand grenades. They're too generous, I said. How did you feel about shooting one of your own soldiers? He exhaled a breath of despair. After thinking for a moment, he finally said, if L am bitten by one of those afflicted things, do not hesitate to shoot my head off. It's the most humane thing to do and also the right thing to do. Not to mention that it is the most compassionate thing to do. Had the fallen soldier not been reanimated, would your refusal to let her be shot have stood? I asked. Absolutely, he said immediately. What happened to, the compassionate thing, and, the right thing to do? I asked. I'd heard of these things happening, but I'd never witnessed it myself until one of my fallen soldiers reanimated. I'm not going to shoot your head off, but HK guy would have no problem doing so. That is one big bastard. We both laughed. At midnight, the mission came down. The other squads had taken heavy casualties and requested backup. The moment we arrived, we were greeted by panic-stricken medics and soldiers. Our six medics provided them what they needed. A dozen or so troopers with severe burn wounds were groaning. We couldn't stay there too long since the three squads we were attached to had gone inside. HK guy led with a shotgun in his hands with six medics behind him and me at the rear. I was pandemonium as gunfights broke out, the soldiers yelling and bawling. The afflicted things screamed horrifically as the bullets pierced their bodies. Several soldiers carried their wounded comrades to the exit. Blood and sweat covered their heads, faces, and uniforms as smoke rose from their melted weapons. The lead medic reported to HQ, receiving a high volume of casualties with burn wounds. Request backup. HQ responded, denied. Press forward. Those near the lead medic had heard HQ's message loud and clear. All six medics and the other medics were treating the burn wounds, those who could still walk were making their way onto the waiting hummers. Our three squads joined the other squads and continued with the fierce firefight. Five minutes later, most of our soldiers had run out of ammo and started to use their sidearms. There were more soldiers who had received multiple burn wounds. The troopers screamed horrifically as the acid blood melted through their uniforms and penetrated their skin. The fierce gunfight continued. Four of our six medics were carrying those with severe burn wound to the medic's hummer outside. One soldier was dragging over a comrade who'd been bitten on the left side of his face. He was covered in acid blood. The lead medic and some of the other medics examined him. He was already dead, on the verge of reanimating. The lead medic signaled for HK guy to proceed, using the protocol for such an event. Those near the fallen soldier moved out of the way and hid around the corner with me. HK guy loaded his 12-gauge shotgun and fired one shell at the deceased's head. Miniature pieces of skull and brain matter splattered everywhere. All the squad leaders ordered everyone to pull back. One of the leaders yelled, too many of them. Once last of the soldiers was loaded into the Hummer, the vehicles roared out of there. Major General Mosk, commanding general of the task force, from Estonia, was a tall, slim wom with short blonde hair. She was sitting at her desk with her support staff swirling around her. Her office was one among the mazes of other offices hastily erected and set apart by boxes and other objects to mark out the cubicles. She spoke with a minor accent. Major General Mosk asked, tell me what happened to the Marine Lance Corporal from Japan, Susu. She focused her attention on the lead medic, Sergeant Meads. Sergeant Meads responded, ma'am, the subject was already dead upon our arrival from loss of blood. I asked one of our guards, Leung Kai Chung, to follow prescribed protocol for when such event occurred. Major General Mosk turned her attention to HK Guy. Soldier, tell me what you did. HK Guy said with enthusiasm, one 12-gauge shotgun shell to the head, using hand signals to demonstrate his point.